If you've ever put uh, air into your tires of your car, then what you've used is a pressure gauge, and it measures what's called the gauge pressure. It doesn't measure the absolute pressure. Also, your blood pressure, like in the demo that we did in the last uh, section, that pressure is actually a gauge pressure. What's the distinction? We will teach you that now. Starting off, a uh, mercury barometer. Um, when the weatherman talks about the barometric readings or being low pressure or high pressure, he's talking about the pressure of the atmosphere. And so, what do we read in a, in, in a pressure gauge? Here's how it works. You take, take a test tube, just a glass tube with a, a, a bottom. Turn it upside down so the bottom's on the top. So this is the closed end, and this is an open end down here. And then take all the air out of that column, uh, out of that glass tube, and put it down, put the open end down into a, into a liquid. Then what will happen, since there's no air up here, it's completely evacuated, that, that air will, will create a pressure, pressure difference that will bring water up into the column. And the height of the water in that column is an indication of the local atmospheric pressure. So this is P2 here. The atmosphere is out here. It's pushing down on this surface. And it's that pressure downward on every point in that surface that forces the fluid up into the glass tube. And the height of it determines um, uh, allows you to determine what the atmospheric pressure is. So up here, we've got uh, zero, um, zero pressure up there, except for a little bit of mercury vapor up there, which we can ignore in the calculation. The pressure up here is essentially zero because we've evacuated all the air from it. So we can simply apply this equation, P2 equals P1 plus rho GH, Realize that P1 is zero, the pressure at the height, at the, at the point up here, that's zero. And then at the bottom, it, it's uh, whatever the pressure of the atmosphere is down here. So P2 is atmospheric pressure, that's rho GH. And the height, therefore, we can solve for by dividing both sides by rho G. So the height of that column, for one atmosphere of pressure, we put 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth pascals. Uh, the density of mercury. One reason why we use mercury here is because mercury has a higher density than water does. And you don't need as a high of a column to get a barometer. So uh, 13.6 times 10 to the 3 kilogram per cubic meter. Water is, is 1 times 10 to the 3 kilogram per cubic meter. So mercury is three, 13, 14 times uh, more dense than water. Divided by 9.8 is 0 0.760 meters. That's the height of this column. So a meter is, is about that much. 0 0.76 is about like that, 76 centimeters. Um, or 760 millimeters, 76 centimeters, or 760 millimeters. This, this is where the origin of the term uh, millimeters of mercury comes. And that's about 29.9 inches. And sometimes the weatherman will, will, measure, will talk about inches of mercury. It's about 30 inches of mercury. Um, so something like that about is, is how many inches of mercury you get for atmospheric pressure. Now, when you're in a pressure low, like the storm rolling in or whatever, this atmospheric pressure is less than this value, and you might get um, 28 or 29 inches of mercury instead of 30 inches of mercury. So one atmosphere is often referred to as 760 millimeters of mercury or as 29.9 inches of mercury. So if we were to replace this mercury 
barometer with a water barometer, we'd have to replace the density of the fluid uh, with the density of water, which is 1 times 10 to the 3. And if you work the numbers out, um, you end up with needing a column of water that's 10.3 meters. That's the distance between, that's basically 10 yards between the two, uh, 10 yard and the 20 yard line in a football field. That's a pretty good sized column of water. That's a long tube. Uh, so it's much more convenient to use mercury. And as we talk, this is the number that we talked about before. That as you, um, at the surface of a lake, the, the pressure of the atmosphere pushing down on it is one atmosphere. But as you go down 10 meters into the lake, each time you decrease your depth, you increase your depth by 10 meters, you up the pressure by one atmosphere. That's where this, that's where this comes from. Um, so in a column of water, water can rise to a maximum height of 10.3 meters in a vertical column under one atmosphere of pressure. So that's the pressure pushing down here that's driving this water up the column that's been evacuated because there's no atmospheric pressure inside here. And, and you only get 10.3 meters if the top of the column, this right here, is fully evacuated. So if you want to try and um, suck your soda through a straw that's longer than 10.3 meters, no matter how strong your lungs are, you're not going to be able to pull that, that liquid through the straw because you can evacuate with your lungs, if you're really strong lungs, you evacuate all the air from the top of that straw and it's still not enough to get the liquid up into your mouth. Conceptual example, where do they put uh, well pumps? They put them at the bottom of the well, short answer is yes, uh, or the top of the well, the short answer is no. Why is that? If this well is, is deeper than 10.3 meters, which many wells are, then and you don't have fluid in this pipe, you've just got air, then no matter how hard you pump, how hard you pump on this pump, you're not going to get the fluid up in there for the same reason that we talked about with the straw. You can suck all the air out of that pipe and still not get the liquid up it. Um, instead, you put the pump at the bottom of the well, and then as long as the pump is strong enough, it will force uh, that water up through the pipe and out to your home. Define gauge pressure. Gauge pressure is the difference between the absolute pressure and atmospheric pressure. Gauge pressure is zero for a fluid that is, that is at atmospheric pressure. So it's just a difference between absolute pressure, that's what we defined as a force per unit area, exerted by the, by the fluid, the gas or the water, on a solid surface perpendicular to that surface. It's that absolute pressure minus the atmospheric pressure, 1.01 times 10 to the fifth pascals. So that if you're, um, and that difference is zero, the gauge pressure, is zero for a fluid that's at atmospheric pressure. That's all there is to it, nothing, no big deal. So uh, blood pressure, systolic and diastolic bl blood pressures are gauge pressures. So they, you've subtracted off the atmospheric pressure when you're talking about systolic and diastolic blood pressures. And they're measured in millimeters of mercury. So you hardly ever hear when you see these numbers, um, 120 over 80, which is a standard blood pressure, these are, this is 120 millimeters of mercury as a gauge pressure. That's how much this pressure is greater than atmospheric pressure. Well, at atmospheric pressure is 760, well here it is, 760 millimeters of mercury, and that um, Systolic pressure is 120 millimeters. So instead of 760 millimeters, 
we've got 120 millimeters. It's maybe 10 or 15 percent of uh, atmospheric pressure. So the absolute pressure of the blood in your body is one atmosphere plus another 10 or 15 percent of an atmosphere. And again, also for 80, this is a, a millimeters of mercury. So you're using the metric system when you're measuring these uh, pressures, uh, blood pressures. So uh, an air, air in an automobile tire is, is measured in pounds per square inch. Uh, and this is the gauge pressure. So typical gauge pressures of about 30 psi. They used to say 30 pounds all around for your automobile. I've been I'm hearing lately that a lot of times they're asking for 35 pounds in your automobile. How many atmospheres of pressure are there? Well, at 30 psi, the absolute pressure inside your tire is about triple the atmospheric pressure. How so? Well, 30 pounds per square inch or psi is about twice 14.7. 14.7 is about 15 psi, it's one atmosphere, times two is two atmospheres. But this measures a gauge pressure. It's the pressure minus the atmospheric pressure. So the absolute pressure inside of your tire is about three atmospheres, whereas the gauge pressure inside of your tire is about two atmospheres. So the open tube manometer is a, a, a method, another method for measuring gas pressure. And the way that it's done is you have an open tube here that's open to the atmosphere. So the pressure in here is atmospheric pressure at the top of that column. But you've got a gas in this box and it's connected to a pipe. And so you've got another pressure in here that's greater than atmospheric pressure, and you're wanting to know what that pressure is. Well, again, it's the height difference that matters. And P2 minus P1, like we've talked about before, P1 is one atmosphere. And um, the gauge pressure in here is the pressure inside P2 minus one atmosphere, and that gives you the gauge pressure inside. But if you want to know the absolute pressure, it's P2. And we can find that by adding one atmosphere of pressure to both sides of this second equation. We add it to the right side, and we get P atmosphere plus rho GH. We add P atmosphere to the left side, and the, and the P atmospheres cancel, and we just get P2. So that would give you the absolute pressure. Again, absolute and gauge pressure are related by um, you get uh, gauge pressure by subtracting one atmosphere from the absolute pressure. 